So here we do what we call is a static wheel. Now a static wheel is where we're starting with and you're gonna see how the discus is coming forward. We've got that inverted orbit and now you're gonna see it. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Throws Nation, and in today's video, we are going to break down another series of common mistakes that we posted on Instagram of one of our young throwers. Now, this is a thrower who background is a freshman. He really is his first year. He had maybe about three or four weeks of training in middle school where there was one coach and so many kids, and it was very limited, and there was one very short track meet with maybe three throws. So it's not a really big foundation to build build. And again, the way we train in the throwing chain reaction system is we're trying to teach athletes things, teach them how to apply. And sometimes we're moving them through at a faster rate so that the athlete has the ability to apply. So this athlete did attend a camp, has learned a lot, but now is faced with getting the body to be able to move. So again, this athlete being completely raw has never really had any kind of structured training program, is pretty green and new to most of, uh, you know, a, a wide variety of movements movements in the weight room. So this athlete is going to need to be working on strength, conditioning, and technique in the weight room, as well as lots of technique, fundamentally learning how to create better positions in the throw. So here we do what we call is a static wheel. Now a static wheel is where we're starting with the arm out and we're teaching the, the athlete how to create the right alignment points and basically setting up position that requires initiation from the lower body first. Now, what you're gonna see is as we start to let this athlete go, the athlete basically gets way too active does a decent job of trying to push off. So you see this, he's trying to initiate the movement, but again, the alignment is off. So one of the first things we talk about is getting the foot alignment correct. And so now you're gonna see that the orbit drops and then that is going to wreak havoc on the throw. Now, another thing is, is when the athlete's here, the hit's too high, a little bit too high of a high point from here because the discus has to be able to move up to the high point, the proper high point of the throw. And what you're gonna see is the athlete's orbit is being inverted. Once the athlete's orbit's inverted, now you're gonna see this type of action. There's no ability to rotate because the athlete's axis is lined up like this. So let's try that. So you're gonna see the axis, he's loading the weight here and the weight's here. And what you would need to see is the weight going here, right? It needs to be moving over the knee. So you can see that the knee didn't move and the knee in the chest is behind the knee here. So as you see this athlete come around, you're going to see that the foot comes way too high, kind of loops around, the orbit's inverted, the discus is catching up to the hips, and he's trying to rotate. You can see that we've, we've got, the, he's been learning the action of the lower body, but the thumb is straight up. The block arm is way too high, and now there's gonna be no real stopping motion, and you can see right here that he's actually on the heel, so the shoulder's in the wrong position, the arm's folded in, the elbow doesn't come down to engage the lats, and that is because this athlete needs a ton of proprioceptive work. He needs to be working on just being more coordinated and strengthening up and doing lots of things to develop general athleticism as well as a ton of throwing motion movement. So now we'll, what we'll do is we'll just kind of point these things out with some markers like we did on our Instagram post. And you're gonna see how the discus is coming forward. We've got that inverted orbit and now you're gonna see it. So we point it all out, the delivery foot, because of that, if you guys have are out there watching this and you can't get athletes to rotate your right foot, coaches, if you're coach, if you're new to this and you're checking out videos, or you're a dad, or you're a, a new thrower trying to figure this out and you just can't ever seem to get that lower body right, you're most likely have an inverted orbit, which is creating this motion, right? So you see how the chest is coming back and the leg is coming forward and now you're gonna see that type of motion right there. You see how it doesn't move. So what you're gonna see is the athletes in, is kind of lined up here on the axis, the upper body's right here, and the orbit is here. And really what you should be seeing is we should be seeing everything lined up here and the orbit over here, and that enables the discus to rotate around and out. You see how we would be able to come out, but right here, you can see on this, that's gonna cause them to open too much, 
and he's not going to really be able there's the hips and the shoulders are completely together that orbit basically forces that foot down and so you can see that that thumb's going to be up on release and the block arm's too high largely due to that inverted orbit and that causes all sorts of problems hopefully you guys got some information out of this and if you're making some of these mistakes hopefully that's some of the things we'd point out a couple of solutions we would offer is that you should be doing a lot of your basic stuff holding the discus getting super you know super comfortable we would say ultra comfortable carrying bowling tossing figure eight winds all these sorts of things we'll post some of those things up here in the coming weeks we'd work a drill in our system called the push pull drill we would teach them how to do specific pillar four drills because this movement is a pillar three four five six drill and we're teaching specifically how to move the lower body which he began to do between the inverted orbit and the hand carry position that just got everything off whack and now the chain reaction is a chain reaction you don't want so you want to be able to get to that high point so you create a chain reaction that is going to help you move through the biomechanics in the positions of the throw fluidly and it's actually easier to throw farther. You just need to learn how. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to give us a uh, thumbs up, comment below, check out our free courses and check our website for upcoming online free workshops. We hope you guys stay safe and healthy. We'll see you on the next video.